Well, welcome everybody. My name is Michael Loder and this podcast is called Sleeping with the Moon. So over the next 12 months, there'll be a new story every month inspired by my sleeps, my sleepovers with the moon from 2021. Each month I went out with a new full moon and slept outside in my bivy bag to take in the experience of that night. I would usually set off in dark, but sometimes I set off in the light, sometimes on foot, but in fact on foot to start off with, because this was very much in the pandemic time when we weren't permitted to go very far. So I stayed to those laws and just walked with my bag on my back Later on in the year, when we were permitted to sort of move a bit further, I think it was more than an hour from your home, I took the car and towards the end of the year, I even went out on my bike. As I said, sometimes I would go out in the light and see how the light changed, but other times it was straight out into the dark and under the sky, which was either full of stars and very clear and very bright or full of clouds. And very dark. So where did this inspiration come from? A good question I asked myself. Back in 2020 I found out what a bivy bag really was and I went out into the woods with friends, we had a fire, we had a great time and we slept out in the woods. Later that year in September I had a new idea of creating a story for families inspired by Ted Hughes, a little bit about his life, a lot about his poetry, and even more about the landscape in which he lived and grew. So I went up to Yorkshire and stayed a wonderful 10 days in a friend's house near the moors and borrowed my friend's bivy bag for my first bivy experience, and it was wonderful. So after that, I decided I need to buy a bivy bag for myself. Not any bivy, but an ex-Dutch army bivy bag. Gore-Tex, waterproof. Big enough for me. I'm six foot four. So I managed to get one. And then I thought, well, it's time to go and sleep out with nature. And at the beginning of 2021, I was listening to a podcast... A wonderful podcast all about nature. And the woman who was telling that was previewing the month of January. And when she started talking about January's full moon called the wolf moon, that really caught my attention. And I decided to sleep out with the full moons of 2021. So the first one is January. And the full moon of January is called the wolf moon. These are largely American names coming from indigenous Americans. And this one is called Moon Dog Rising. Walking the lane through grit and dirt, while skirting around mud puddles of wet days past. There are no drifting clouds to blanket the absent, waning, gibbous moon that has yet to rise. Clement air, no rain, no wind, with thoughts of seeping midnight chill and early morning plummet gather in my mind, despite the forecast of mild, dry, still. In pitch clear sky with constellations high and seven sisters lustrous shine, Orion hunts the great bear, whilst I, leagues below, search for Sirius, Canis Major, 
the dog star of creation from Dogon lore. The star-littered, black, treacled sky burns clear and bright above the right, whilst the looming horizon above the lower trimmed left hedge smoulders with city pollution to blinker the celestial glow. Devices to deter intruders blink alarming green in house and car, sensor lights ignite at thirty paces, uncurtained rooms discharge their radiance, infiltrating into the secrecy of the night. I stand on darkened road, on the cusp of January's wolf full moon, when initiates were taken into the forest by masked guides. Wolf the teacher, wolf the surrogate, wolf who suckled Rome. Off the road, I take the track that leads to the rock-lined, wood-lined valley of Goblin Coombe. I turn left and start to climb the darker track of exposed stone and root towards a former Iron Age home and the toot that stands atop as bushes whisper to the evergreen oaks of exploits that linger in these woods undetected. On the rising path, my vision is limited to a hazy beam of torchlight ensorcelled with misty peripheral rings. It feels surreal, a waking dream. And as gentle fear creeps in, I ask myself, am I really here? I step from the corridor path through a doorway of beech and pine, companions encouraging vertical growth to find my bedding spot, horizontal, near to birthday parties of long ago. Any journey into the night is a journey of finding your way through the dark with the light that is offered. And with two candles aglow, I make my nest of bivy and sleeping bag, blankets of wool and fleece, inflatable pillow and mat, remaining undetected without fiery beacon glow still awaiting the moon dogs rising. The forest is quiet, apart from the occasional swell of waves that sweep through the treetop pines, as I lie cocooned in my layers, looking up through the eye hole of my bivy to twenty bright stars. And under the watchful gaze of Orion, I climb the dangling belt sure-footed up the celestial ladder with imagination's bare feet to rise from the blissful somnolence below. I sleep. A call wrenches me awake, a dark ratcheting tightening the twist. Late night owl light conversation drifts in and out whilst the wind hoots along the tunnelled coombe cold night breeze whispers me awake, and wriggling from where I have sunk, I come up for air and gasp as I catch the bright, haloed, hallowed light of the moon dog, rising from its poor mark clouded trail, and smile, hello. The shy moon has eventually appeared, twice bitten by winter's wolfish hunger. Dream waves are carried on the wind, gradually building, lifting the air blown trees from their roots. The tidal flow now pouring along imagination's ancient riverbed breaks over steep rocky banks to flood my brown leaf island. 
the peering, squint-eyed wolf moon watches with indifference, padding softly along the dark path of night, now both hunted and vaunted by humankind for its wild wisdom. The night drifts, the dark begins to pale, and I am stirred by the high-pitched whining and whimpering of an early morning earth dog, followed by a firm voice. Pictures of bared teeth and claw disturb my mind before the silence lulls me back to sleep. Be not afeared, the aisle is full of noises, sounds and sweet airs that give delight and hurt not. That if I then had waked after long sleep will make me sleep again. Gratitude in glory to William Shakespeare's Tempest Words. Birdsong bright, stirring new worm cast thoughts in my grub like bag. Light dawns and a new day beckons as crow calls morning's warning. Racing overhead with roke, croak in the pinking of valley's early gathering. Footfall, bird call, and a rush of steps scuffle nearby. I sit from invisible horizontal, and the early morning terrier, now on the border of bewilderment, stares with surprise as the man worm materialises from the forest floor. I sit still. Inside my brown, green, black, mustard, camouflaged envelope, on leafy bed, by mossy ankled beach, content and warmed, cool and calm, whilst a gentle breeze caresses with life-giving breath. I contemplate my night vigil to reawaken the conscious of what we have lost in distancing ourselves from our wolf brother, once man's best friend. Back on the path, I meet Bert, the dog, big, burly and barky, his golden brown head higher than my waist, trotting ahead of his family of toddlers and mum, sniffing and snuffling, watching, waiting and wagging. Looking into one another's eyes, we search for that dim and distant past of shared DNA that bound us together on the hunt. The sentinel hound of the starry night now the watchdog of day jumps and prints mud paw marks onto my trousered thighs before hurrying the family pack along the path and into the longed-for wilderness. Crossing the road, and I'm back in the tame lands, back in the park with the docile, housebroken canines playing pick-me-up. But then I'm spotted and charged by a barrel-shaped barking black lab which sneaks behind me growling and jowling. An unwelcome meeting, a most unexpected greeting from this disobedient parkland wolf in dog's clothing, as the owner goes down on his knees to plead for control, which is not forthcoming. Eventually, the black lab, with unconscious thoughts of wolf-like roots, is tied on the lead, taken to the car, and driven home in the cage boot to domestication. A far cry, and howl from last night's climb of the moon dog rising, padding softly on illuminated clouds to meet Sirius unleashed. Wolf, our trained companion, replaced by man's best friend, and wherein lies the balance now 
between persecution and rewilding absolution. So who's in control and who owns who? Where is the wild and where is the free? Who is the tamed and who owes who? And who will be howling free when the full wolf moon is rising? Thank you very much for listening to this month's podcast, Sleeping with the Moon. My name is Michael Loder. And if you want to contact me, you can by email at foolworks.co.uk. That's F-O-O-L-W-O-R-K-S dot co dot UK. The beautiful, evocative music was played by Martin Solomon. And you can find more about him at martinsolomon.com. Solomon as in the king. And this month's podcast was produced by Pommy Harmer. So many thanks to her for doing that. If you want to meet us and listen to next month's podcast, please do. February's full moon is called the Hunger Moon. <laughs>